Hello friends I made this for. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and I'm a tarot reader and Reiki practitioner here in Philadelphia, PA. I also really love working with astrology just in my own practice and when I work with others because I do think astrology, if you are a witch and you're into astrology, working with what's going on planetary wise can be really supportive with helping us understand what is going on and how to maybe utilize some of those energies. So today's video is going to be all about Mars in Gemini and we're going to be doing that by looking at three different decks and specifically the cards, the Tower, which is Mars, and the Lovers, which is Gemini. So I've talked about Gemini and I've talked about um, Mars before on my channel. You can look at those videos. I'll try and link them down below, but I specifically want to look at what is Mars in Gemini? What sort of energies can that bring us or what can we kind of connect in there? What sort of stories is this telling us? Or what sort of things might we be tapping into? And of course, connecting with Mars is going to be the most important part, or at least the foundation for our storytelling today. So if you like what I talk about, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications when I make another post because, of course, I do that sporadically, but you might want to know when it happens. And, of course, if you want to see quickie videos on all of this, I do upload to TikTok as well in case this is too fucking long for you, which is, oops, fine. Um... Subnormal Child, subnormalchild.com, all of that is in the box down below if you want to work with me one on one. Anyway, all of that aside, let's get into the good stuff. So, just some nitty gritty. Mars entered Gemini on March 3rd. So, we've been here for a hot second, at least going on almost a week of being in. Gemini. Mars spent the good part of 2020 in Aries. It's, it didn't do a whole lot of shit except be in retrograde and be in Aries for the majority of um, 2020. So what we have going on this year is a lot more movement for Mars. Mars is kind of an interesting planet because it's a little more sporadic with its movements. Earlier, um, this year, I talked about Venus specifically. I talked about Venus um, in Pisces, I think. I don't know, wherever Venus is at. Um, and I talked about how Venus is our value system, what we find important and what we find of significance and where we have our value system laid out. Now, Mars is really interesting because Mars is, if Venus is our value system, Mars is how we pursue our values. And of course, some of that information that I'm sharing today is also from this book, Planetary pa Pause, by Brady Waller, also known as The Mythic Landscape on Instagram. That has been um, one of their terms, I think, that has brought a lot of um, context for me in Mars, hearing that if Venus is our value system, that Mars is how we pursue it. When they explained it like that, it kind of was um, really a light bulb going off in my own brain and my connection with this planet where I now see it way more clearly that way. Brady in this book also makes note that this is kind of where our, inner, our output is. So again, if you want to get deeper into Mars specifically, connect with Brady on this book. There's only a few left, so you definitely want to get those, but I believe there's still a digital download available. Now with that said, back on what this video is about. So because Mars is kind of like our aggressions or how we pursue things, how we go for things, how we move through the world and like pursue what we want, those goals and values, we can see that in the tower and the tarot. So I'm going to be looking at the tower through the tarot in three different cards along with the lovers, which is Gemini in three different cards. So Mars is going to be in the tarot as the tower, as I said, and we're going to be looking at the wild unknown tarot. 
the Holy Spectrum Tarot, and Apparition Spirit Speak Tarot to kind of give us our context of what these, what this card looks like in three different versions. So with that said, we're going to start by looking at um, the tower, but then go into what is the lovers in each one of these decks as well to kind of get a whole story, what these um, interpretations of the tower might mean for us and what we might want to get out of them through each deck individually. That way we can kind of see what sort of story we might tell through these particular decks rather than just looking at each card individually and then going through again each card individually. So with that said, thank you for being here. I talk a lot. Yay. So anyway, friends, let's talk about the tower starting with this one. So this is the tower and the wild unknown tarot. And right off the bat, we see this connection of movement. You're going to see a little bit of transformation in each one of these cards. Because again, if Mars is how we're pursuing our value system, if Mars is how we are moving into the world and like knocking shit over and going, you know what, this, that, and the other, we're making shit happen. Again, Mars is also associated with Aries. So this is very Aries energy to me. There's a lot of, we got to go do the thing now. So we see here a tree that's been struck by lightning and it's set ablaze a little bit. We see that the top is actually going to be falling off. This is kind of an interesting interpretation of the tower because it seems scary, but it also shows that there's it's not probably going to ruin this tree. It's just going to take off some of the growth and possibly start over. So this is the thing about Aries. If you're noticing a lot of change happening right now, perhaps it is because we're connecting with Mars and there's a lot of movement going on with Mars. So in this Mars card, in this tower card, we see energies outside, almost within from the, from the higher realms, creating change on the physical earth. Now that's an interesting part that's really important, I think, is that Things that are brought into motion are often outside of our abilities. Sometimes when we pull the tower, we find that there are things outside of our control that are causing big change. And that's actually a really positive thing. Because if things are outside of our control, we are allowed to make space and allow things to change in a way that might be really challenging, but really transformative for us. I say that as someone who's getting kicked out of their apartment in the middle of a panorama. Don't look at me. So this is a good card to connect to when we're thinking about themes in the tower, specifically around what do we have the capacity con to control and what do we not? I sometimes feel that the tower, the real wheel of fortune, death, uh, they're all pretty similar to me because it's a lot of get dragged. Things are going to be in constant change, constant motion, and there's not much you can do except roll with it. And especially with this card, there is this outside force that is causing a huge change. And though it may be scary, it may be damaging, perhaps there is something good that can come out of this. And that is the tree is still standing. Though some of it is definitely taken down. Will it all burn down? We don't know. It's good to not fortune tell, but instead just exhibit or look at what's going on and absorb where we can make our necessary changes. So with Mars moving into the lovers or Gemini, what does this mean for us? What are we getting out of this time right now? So there is change. There's a foundation shifting. And this might be coming up in our relationships. That's the big thing I want us to take with the lovers and Gemini is that 
It is not technically just romantic relationships. That's what's really important. We see those that we may work with or our bosses, our family members. This is relations anywhere. It could even be our familiars animal-wise that are having changes in their lives that we have to make space for, right? So with this lovers, I really like this card because it shows two animals that are pretty mirror images of each other and they are flying together. This is a very positive aspect of the lovers card where we can kind of see where other people remind us are our mirrors for us in good ways. We see that this bird is flying with another bird and, and there's this enlightenment going on. There's this like radiatile power or light that is saying, yes, we illuminate each other. We are here to support each other and inspire each other to keep flying through whatever is going on, right? So in this story of Mars and Gemini, there is, and this is what might be coming up, for some of us with Mars and Gemini, is our relationships and how we see them are changing. How we connect with those relationships and mirror those relationships might be changing. We're expanding our invitations here. We're maybe transmuting what these relationships mean to us. We might be asked to go deeper in a different way. So, that is what Mars and Gemini might be bringing out for us, is we can see these relationships, these familiars in our lives that are showing us things about ourselves right now. Maybe it's things that we need to change, but maybe it's also how we pursue things. Look at how other people around you are doing things. Is that within what you want? Are they pursuing equal things that you are? Or... Are you guys going in different directions? And is that causing a rift or some friction here? Is it causing you to want to change how you are doing things? These are the invitations that Mars and Gemini might be bringing up. Our relationships and how we relate back to those relationships can be really interesting. Now, the... Um, Apparition Spirit Speak Tarot deck, we see the tower here and we see this transformation. We see a house of cards. Of course, this is not stable, right? We saw in the last card a way more stable foundation get shooken up. This tree is stable. It's strong, but even it cannot control the outside forces that are taking control. And so it might be a sign, if the, especially if that tree burns down, that it was sick and it was not good to go. But when we see this, we see a, a, a house of cards. And of course, this is not stable at all. So this reminds us that Mars is constantly showing us where change can be and where it can be pursued, right? Mars can be a good relation that we can build with our idea of like, what are our value system and how are they constantly changing? Because back in the day, Mars was also associated with Scorpio. And so we can see that this kind of gives us some idea of Mars can also be where we have some shadow work. So where do we see our value system possibly transforming to a different realm that we can frame differently? This transformation that might be destruction might be how we can actually see it presented in a way that we are we find it more supportive, right? So that's one thing that we can take away from this as well, is there's a connection here of, okay, this is not where we want to be. This is not where we want our framed artwork. Also, is this really serving anybody? Can we can we make that change ourselves? Can we set this on fire? Can we say, nope, the ashes are way more necessary than the structure itself? Can we make something out of those ashes? Can we transform that experience? So that's another way to look at the tower through the veil of apparition spirit speak tarot deck. There's something here that's really powerful as far as like we can be the ones to say the change must be done. I don't want to be subject to outside forces. I want to in initiate this change. I don't want to be subject to somebody else's discretions or rules or shifts. I want to initiate what I feel is right for me. 
So what about the lovers? So again, we see the lovers here has a good indicator of we have relationships. These relationships can be a bridge for us. They can be a ladder bringing us up. We can fill our cup here. We have to have an open heart with these relationships. They can illuminate for us. There's a lot here that's going on. So it can be kind of challenging to figure out like, well, what does this all mean? We see the void. We see the cow. We see a lot going on here. And I think a big takeaway is, again, this is very positive shit going on here as far as a relationship with the lover's card. What can our relationships offer us and what can we offer our relationships? So another thing that might be happening is we might be going, there are things here that need to transform and change within my relations with other people. Again, this doesn't have to be romantic. It can be friends, it can be family, it can be coworkers, it can be your boss. These are all relationships that we have with people. So what does it mean? It's going to be up to us to decide what relationships require us to shift how we do things or put new boundaries in for our relationships. So again, another big takeaway I like to see in this deck is the takeaway of, okay, we have to take this cup. We have to make it work for us. We have to have that open heart. We, we need to be all these things, all these things and allow ourselves to receive so that this card from this deck actually has a lot of receptivity rather than just observation of like, okay, how is this person a mirror for me? Well, in this deck, it's more of how can I receive more or how can I give more? How can I be more supportive in these relations that I have? So that might be another thing coming up for you around Mars and uh, Gemini is how we view these relationships and how can we transform things to actually be more supportive? And that might be through you, not through others. That might not be like, how can this person support me more? How can you support them better? And is this relationship even something that you want to fucking worry about? Like, it's totally fine. If they don't have the same value system as you, do you need to be changing your value system? Or is it a matter of, oh, maybe we're not of service to each other anymore? There's a lot of ways we can interpret that. So last but not least, the Holy Spectrum Tarot. We have the tower here. And again, we see this is a really classic depiction with the lightning and this whole structure that's really honestly dilapidated and this person falling. So there's this transformative like aspect here where this person is falling, but they seem protected by some energy where it's like, you know what? Mars reminds us that things are going to shift, things are going to change, and even if it is not comfortable, it'll be fine. But we have to be okay with the free fall that comes. Again, we see a really interesting connection here with the lightning. That's a very common thing where we see like this is part of the transformation is things are sometimes out of our control, and that's totally fine. Now, with this card, I really like that it's creating this space where, again, Allow yourself to fall into what's going on. You don't have to just let things happen to you, but either roll with it or get dragged is a big theme, I feel like, with the tower. And of course, sometimes these things happen because the foundation wasn't actually very good, right? So here is our last lover's card. And this one's a great reflection of the lovers because it shows us and how we can connect with our shadow self. We are being open and receptive, touching into that shadow self. Sometimes people are here to remind us of the shadow. Sometimes they're here to remind us of the light. But again, it's about self-reflection. It's not a matter of like, how are, is this person being a shadow force in my life that's not positive? No. There's good shadow work to be done through our relations, but we have to be receptive and open. And looking into the mirror that are those around us. And even our shadow self is a mirror for us. So Mars for us right now might be, Mars and Gemini might be in instigating how is this transformation, this free fall allowing us to engage in our shadow self in a way that we hadn't before? How can we be receptive and open and, and channeling that change for ourselves and those around us? Because when we are better in alignment, when we're doing those things that feel 
like we're creating a real structure of support for ourselves, we are supporting our, our community. Sometimes we don't get supported by our community by making changes. Well, that's okay. We don't have to be everybody's best friend. Or sometimes that job is not the right job for you. Sometimes a coworker that we have that is problematic for us is a reminder of, okay, where can I check myself? Where are her wounds that are being triggered by me? And how can I put those boundaries up so that I'm not being triggered by her wounding or their wounding or his wounding? There's a lot to unpack. So I in, inspire, want to inspire you to take out your tower card, your, um, sorry, everybody, your lover's card, and kind of see where can you connect these stories, these stories that where things may be on the rocks, you're not really understanding why things got rough all of a sudden, where there's all this friction with people that you love, or you're feeling like not in alignment with those people right now. Is there something that you need to be learning as far as how you move through the world? Is it things that you need to cut or call in? So if you are looking to connect with Mars right now, Mars in Gemini, that medicine, or maybe your Mars is in Gemini, so you're having a little bit of a Mars return right now, I would really encourage you to take out the lover and the tower in your personal decks and, and see what happens. A good practice that might work with you or for you is take those out and meditate on them. Visualize them. Ask questions to those cards. And then when you are done calling in some, some good medicine, journaling with those cards to see what is the medicine you want to you want to get out of this time right now but with that said if you like what i do again please look at the links down below have a beautiful day my friends i hope that this is supportive of you mars and gemini is really interesting gemini has a lot of really interesting work and sometimes that's shadow work and sometimes people hate on it and sometimes they just need to move the fuck on. Gemini, I see you out there. It's not all shadow. It's not all daisies, but you're doing the work and I love it. But with that said, have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.